Hello, here we are yet again for another lovely session of CNG 4412 Steel and Concrete Design. Okay, this is going to be the second part in the uh, 14th lecture in the video series, and in this video I just want to discuss a few miscellaneous uh, topics in terms of connecting uh, steel beams uh, to, other, uh, to other members, and discuss some of the limit states therein. Now, this is not going to be a full connection design video, we're not talking about, say, uh, moment connections, shear connections, etc. I'm just trying to talk, I just want to talk about a few uh, issues associated with the end connections, point load connections, things like that, for uh, steel beam design. And in this video, the two section, the two, uh, the two topics I want to look at are coped beams and uh, web yielding and web uh, crippling, etc. in terms of bearing plates. So I'm looking at, basically I'm, I have two topics, I'm looking at uh, uh, coped uh, flanges uh, for steel beams and also um, bearing plates to handle point loads and reactions. Okay, and you may not know what those are yet, but we'll hopefully after this you'll have some feel for what coped beams and uh, bearing plates are and how we can design for them. Okay, so let's see here. So what does it mean for a beam to be coped? Well, um, fundamentally what it means for a beam to be coped is that um, oftentimes when we're putting together a connection, it may not be possible to actually have uh, the full flange conveniently connected. So uh, sometimes you do connect the, fl the full flange to the full flange, etc., etc., and you can develop a full moment capacity, but depending on your specific, the, the exact specifics of your connection, that may not be possible. And so instead, oftentimes you see coped beams, which are as follows. So coped, uh, C-O-P-E-D. Uh, if you're not familiar with the topic, this is what a coped beam looks like. So imagine I have two beams, maybe a W section connection to another W section. So say I have a girder here, a larger uh, W section. And to this, I wish to connect a smaller W section as a beam. And maybe they have, maybe the top of the beams are going to be the same uh, for each of these. So maybe I have a, maybe I have a W section like this that I wish to connect. So uh, something kind of like this, with maybe the top of the flange here, the top of the top flange here, and the bottom of the bottom flange here. So it wouldn't, be it wouldn't surprise us if our uh, beam, one of our support beams or our floor beams, uh, was at a had a smaller uh, depth than a uh, a much larger girder, uh, etc. Now, uh, so let's think about this. This is going to continue on past here, something like this continuing on. However, though, how do we con how do we physically connect this beam to this girder? No, we could just extend it all the way along, but then you'd have to have some very complex, uh, you'd have to have some very complex, uh, complete penetration weld, something like that, or we could add some flange plates, uh, connect it up, etc. And if we were doing a moment connection, that would be preferable, and that would in fact be that that in fact would be necessary. But often, especially in the cases of say shear connections, what we'll do is something more like this. In fact, I might actually draw this a little bit differently to to illustrate this this topic uh, properly. So we may, we would uh, basically, when I cope a beam, uh, basically at a, at a simple level, what coping a beam means is that we're going to trim back the, flan the upper flange and part of the web. I suppose you could do this for the bottom flange too, although usually when I think of cope beams, I think of trimming back the upper flange, although there may be some exceptions to that. So imagine in, in order to fit this thing, and I'm going to exaggerate the distances here, this, the distance here would be much closer than what we would have, uh, this would be almost right up against the, flan the upper flange here, with just enough room to give us some welding space, etc., or, or bolting space, etc., but uh, I'm drawing it with a much larger separation for the point of really illustrating the concept. So imagine we take a W section and we trim back uh, the section itself at the end. So we remove the flange at the end and we, move part, we remove part of the web at the end. And uh, then we connect, uh, we, we add maybe just a very small shear connection here. If I just have a, uh, a plate that serves to join the, uh, that serves to join a one member to another in the web, we call that a shear tab. So it'd be something like this, like an angle iron here, here. And let me uh, draw the let me draw a zoomed in version of this here, 
So you would have your uh, web plate here, and then you might have a connecting plate here, say a shear tab. Maybe this could be a, a shear tab, could be something like an angle, some, maybe something like this. And then connected to that would be my trimmed or coped beam. Something kind of like this. And then continuing on like this. So this is what a cope beam looks like. Now we have a couple dimensions that we want to be aware of. The first is a, is a dimension that we're going to call decope, and that is just the depth of the cope. So how deep into the beam are we cutting? That would be D underscore cope, decope, and then we also have S. And S is the distance from the, uh, the, the uh, surface of the cope, the upper surface of the cope, to the bottom of the connection. And the bottom of the connection at this point, at this level being defined as the lower, the center line of, low, of, the, lowest, of the lowermost bolt. Uh, if it was a welded connection, it would be to the end of the weld, etc. And so this would be S here. Because if this thing's gonna fail, it's going to fail in, well, it could fail in a variety of ways, both either yielding block shear rupture, etc. But in block shear rupture, it would fail like this. And the S is really the depth of the block shear rupture failure plane. Okay, so this is the basic idea of coped beams, and what I would like to discuss is how we calculate the capacity of something like this. So how do we actually calculate the capacity of something like this? Well, uh, let's consider this. First, let's consider uh, shear, and shear really isn't going to be that bad. We're going to use a very, just a simple modified form of the equation that we've already used for calculating the shear capacity of a uh, W section or other uh, strong axis bending member. So strength design of cope members. Now for the member it's attaching to, it wouldn't be any, it wouldn't be any different, but for the cope member, that's where we need some specialized, some very specialized equations. So strength design of cope members or cope beams. And so let's see here. So I'm gonna look at both shear and bending. So for shear, well, uh, normally in shear, we use the formula, uh, we use the shear formula uh, from chapter G, and we just treat the area of the web, uh, we say the area of the web is equal to uh, DTW. And this is for normal, uh, for normal beam shear. However, for coped beams, we basically are just going to, we are effectively just going to decrease the depth of our web. So for coped beams, so really shear isn't that bad. For coped beams, uh, for coped beams, we're just going to use the formula area of web is equal to uh, d, the overall depth of the beam, minus the depth of the cope uh, times TW, which is the thickness of the web. The thickness of the web. And really, this is just a method of uh, calculating a modified cross-sectional area for the purpose of shear. And then once you have AW, proceed with the normal shear calculation equations that we previously discussed in chapter G. Uh, the conventional or normal uh, shear capacity of equations we previously discussed. Shear capacity equations previously discussed. So next, I'd like to look at how we calculate this thing, the capacity of this for bending. So we talked about shear. Really, shear isn't that bad. All you're doing is modifying the effective depth of your web. So bending, um, things are going to be a little bit different. So for bending, if you're calculating the capacity of a coped beam in bending, uh, basically you're going to. We need some way to calculate. Now here's the difficulty. Uh, we do need some way. Uh, need some way 
uh, of calculating, of checking moment demand. Uh, moment demand uh, against moment capacity. And really you have two approaches. One, you can use base principles, just simple mechanics and materials type of, uh, thinking, looking at, okay, well, we've lost this most cross-sectional area, here's the new centroid, here's the new moment of inertia, all that kind of thing. Uh, so you can use base pr uh, principles from mechanics and materials. Or you can also use the steel table design aids, or the steel manual design aids. So mechanics and materials, or two, you can use uh, the uh, tables and design aids. Use design aids from AISC. From AISC. And uh, the, the basic idea here is that we're going to use, oh, in short, we're going to use uh, table 9.2, or 9-2. This is table 9-2, and in the latest edition of the manual, again in the, uh, I guess what is this, the teal manual, so that is of course the 15th edition of the manual, uh, you're going to use, pay, this is table 9-2, found on page uh, 9-25. And on this table you'll find a variety of factors, uh, a variety of calculations, uh, basically, your inputs are your section and the geometry of the cope, and that and it will effectively tell you the. Uh, basically, what this tells you is that it tells you the modified. So maybe I can do an input-output form. Input will be uh, W section, uh, and then the uh, depth of the cope, or DC in this case, in the case of this table. And the output will be the elastic section modulus, a modified S, elastic section modulus. And you can then use this to calculate bending moment capacity as we have done previously. Okay, then uh, next the other limit state we need to consider is block shear. So we've looked at overall shear, we've looked at uh, We've looked at uh, bending, and then we've looked at, and uh, now we need to look at block shear. So when I say shear versus block shear, in the case of uh, shear, we would talk about, we would be considering this entire plane here of the whole cope flange, or sorry, the whole coped beam just uh, sliding out along a failure plane like this. A block shear would be looking at just this failure plane here, uh, failing in our, or this this uh, boundary here, failing in terms of our um, uh, in terms of our uh, shear tab there. And uh, again, here there's going to be two different methods. One, we can use base principles as always. Use base principles. In this context, the what that means is uh, base principles in this context means the equations of block shear rupture uh, explored in the tension member uh, design of block, sh uh, block shear rupture pre previously discussed. Where you have a certain failure plane, part of a certain failure surface, part of its intention, part of its shear, and then looking at the overall capacity therein. Block shear rupture previously discussed. And the second method, of course, just like before, is to use design aids. And um, so, again, uh, the basic idea here is that we're going to have, or the big idea here, is that we're going to have both shear and tension present. And in this case, usually our demand, again, we're always talking about steel design, demand versus supply. 
In this case, demand usually is going to be equal to the reaction at the beam end, or just reaction of the beam. Reaction of the beam. And in order, to, so you can do this using um, base well, block structure equations, but we do have another design aid, and this is table 9-3. Uh, 9-3. Uh, and table 9-3, uh, scrolling ahead in my steel manual, turning ahead in my steel manual, uh, basically, well also 9-3, I should probably mention uh, A, B, and C, there are different forms of this, 9.3A, 9-3B, and 9-3C, and each of those have particular conditions they might want to read up on, and this is found on page, let's see, uh, the start of 9.3A, is uh, page 9-37 of the 15th edition of the manual. And that there, fundamentally, is the basic idea of coped beams. So next, uh, so actually I might just start stop here, have a, uh, allow us to have a brief shorter uh, video here, and we'll continue on shortly with uh, web yielding web crippling for bearing connections, for bearing plates.